Hey guys, in today's video, I want to discuss why video analysis is crucial to your tennis development. Now, back in the day, cameras weren't so readily available. I can remember my dad had a huge camcorder, one of those things you had to carry on your shoulder. And he would record a lot of tennis, but the footage, of course, wasn't as high quality as now. And to view the content, it was a hassle. You know, you had to put the little cassette that was in the camcorder, you had to put it in a bigger adapter cassette and then stick it in the VHS. And it was useful, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't as easy as it is nowadays where everybody's got a phone with a super high quality camera. So why is video analysis so important? Well, it's because when you're playing on the tennis court, what you perceive your technique to be is not necessarily the reality. I'm sure you can relate to this. You might be thinking that your forehand looks like Roger Federer's forehand and then you record yourself and you take a look at it and you are in shock because it looks nothing like it. Now, another reason why video analysis is crucial is that even if you're working on technique with a coach or by yourself, there's gonna be certain things inside of your technique that are gonna be difficult to feel. And this is where video analysis comes in very handy because through slow motion, you can examine these small intricate details of your strokes and see whether you are lacking some fundamentals in those areas. So in other words, there are parts of the strokes that are happening so fast that even a coach can't catch these technical elements in real time. This is where slow motion footage is very crucial. And that's why video analysis can be extremely helpful in identifying technical deficiencies and then setting up a plan on how to correct them. Now, video analysis is not only good to correct your technique, but it's also super important to improve your match play. So I recommend to everybody that you record yourself as much as possible because when you're in the heat of the battle, your mind works in mysterious ways and you might not be conscious of how you are behaving out there, how you are hitting your strokes, what shot selection you have, what your body language is. And because you're not aware that you're playing a certain way, seeing yourself on video footage can help you to do better the next time you step on a match court. So what equipment do you need to get started? Well, a phone by itself is not gonna be enough and I'm gonna explain in a second why that is. So you definitely need a tripod and you need a sturdy one that can withstand wind or you may be running into it. So something with long legs with a good wide base. If you want to get this one, I have an Amazon link in my description. I've had these tripods for three years and they're holding up really well. You also will need an attachment to put your phone on a tripod. As far as a camera, a phone is completely sufficient. And I want you to keep one thing in mind when you're recording yourself with the phone for your forehand backhand and for your volleys you need to put your phone in landscape format in other words the phone has to be positioned like this when you're recording your serve and your overhead you do need to put your phone in the vertical format why because if you have your phone in the landscape format and you're recording your serve you might not catch the height of the toss while in a vertical format like this you'll definitely catch the height of the toss if you record everything in a vertical format you might miss some forehands, backhands, and volleys because the frame is not big enough and you're gonna run out of the frame super easily and you're gonna miss a lot of shots. So again, forehand, backhand, volleys, landscape, serve and overheads, vertical. And I'm gonna show you the perfect way to capture your strokes so that you don't miss anything. So if you're hitting a forehand, the camera must be to your side. If you're hitting a backhand, of course, the camera is gonna be on the other side. If you're hitting a serve as a right-hander, the camera is gonna be on your right side. You're also going to need rear footage. So you put the camera right behind you. This goes for all strokes. If you have two tripods and two cameras, you can record simultaneously. But if you don't, I would do an equal amount of recording from the side and from the back on each specific stroke. Now, why do we need side and rear footage? Because a lot of you guys record yourself diagonally from the corner and from here it's a very difficult angle you're gonna miss a lot of things on your forehand for example and on your serve and the same goes if you position your camera diagonally uh, towards the backhand corner there's just gonna be 
things that you can't see when the camera is positioned in this way. The same goes for recording yourself diagonally from the front. You're going to miss a lot of things that are taking place in the back of your stroke. So under no circumstances do you want these angles when recording yourself. And the classic mistake that people make is just to lean their phone against the fence like this. And now we have this awful angle that makes it very difficult to see things regarding your video analysis. This is something that I see all the time when people send me footage of themselves playing. Under no circumstance should you ever lean your phone against the fence at this angle because it's going to be very difficult to see the so important technical details of your strokes. So guys, here comes the big question. Do you record in video format or in slow-mo format? Of course, if you record in slow-mo, you're going to get better frames per second and you're going to see much more in your video footage. If you record in video format and then slow your footage down, there are going to be frames missing. For example, you might not be able to catch the contact with the ball. However, if you record in slow-mo, this is going to take a tremendous amount of storage from your phone. So what I recommend is that you let your camera run in video, but then you do catch maybe three to five minutes of slow-mo just so that you have a little bit more detailed footage of your strokes. But if you let your camera run for an hour on slow-mo, this is going to take a lot of storage away from your phone. So now that you have your footage, what do you do next? Well, you're going to need a slow-mo app because the scroller on the iPhone Photos app is too fast. It's going to be very difficult to slow the stroke down and find the contact because that slider is just not accurate enough. So I recommend that you buy any slow motion app on the market. Just go to the app store, type in slow-mo and pick your favorite one. All of them are better than the actual Photos app on your iPhone. And why do I say that? Because the scroller is more accurate and it's much easier to find a specific portion of your stroke with a more accurate scroller. Now here comes the most important question. How do you analyze your footage? Well, I'm going to tell you what not to do. And what a lot of people do is put themselves hitting a forehand, for example, and then put Fetter next to them. That is an absolute waste of time because the vast majority of players that look at Federer are looking at Federer's style and they're not looking at the fundamentals. You have to understand that all high level players have the same fundamentals on their strokes. There's no need for you to waste your time while analyzing your strokes and going on the court and practicing and try to copy someone else's style. That is the number one mistake when it comes to video analysis, not only at the recreational level, but across all tennis levels. And that is when players are trying to copy style over fundamentals. Now, how do you know the difference between fundamentals and style? Well, I have many videos on my YouTube channel where I discuss fundamentals versus style. If you go to Intuitive Tennis Premium, which is my membership site, I have an entire course where I discuss the difference between fundamentals and style on all the strokes in the game of tennis. And guys, look, I've coached thousands of players from the beginner level all the way to the professional level via video analysis and these players have improved tremendously because of that. I created a system where I'm able to pinpoint all the deficiencies on every single stroke and I've put all this information into a course called the Intuitive Tennis Video Analysis Masterclass. Now this is a very comprehensive course that covers all strokes and it includes match play analysis and if you're more interested you can go to the description and click the link, but I'm going to give you an excerpt from the course where you can see my method of analyzing strokes. When it comes to analyzing your toss location with the clock analogy, it's very important that you take several factors into consideration. Number one, are you practicing your serve in a stationary position without utilizing your body's power sources or are you doing a full body serve? This is going to be very important for you to understand because if you're doing a stationary serve, the body position will remain the same. And when you're intending your toss, you have to know that the toss will have to be positioned in a different location. However, if you're utilizing your body's power sources and you start to lean forward, the body position will change independent of whether you have a platform stance or a pinpoint stance. Now, the way you're going to check if your body position has changed is in the following way. You're going to take the straight line out of the toolkit and you're going to draw a line through the middle of your body when you're starting your serve. You're going to scroll forward shortly 
prior to making contact with the ball, you're going to draw another line through the middle of your body. And now you're going to start scrolling back and forth and you can see whether your body position has changed. You should lean forward on your serve and this is a natural position that the body will get into shortly prior to the contact and this affects your toss intention tremendously. So knowing that your body position will change, you need to intend to toss the ball in such a way that you end up making contact around 12 o'clock. So in your toss analysis, you're going to scroll forward shortly prior to you making contact with the ball. You're going to draw a line through the middle of your body. And now you scroll towards the contact. And you're going to see that the contact on your flat and your slice serve is occurring between 12 and 1 o'clock. Now you're going to take the circle out of your toolkit. and You're going to draw it right around the contact. You can see that this contact is occurring slightly to the right of this line. And this straight line in the middle represents... 12 o'clock so any contact that's occurring slightly to the right we're going to call that one o'clock and anything that's further to the right we're going to call that two o'clock now remember this is regarding your flat and your slice serve the contact is going to be different on your kick generally you want the contact to take place inside of the body's core and we can see here that this contact indeed occurred outside my body's core and there's a disadvantage you want the contact to take place inside of your body's core so you can do is draw a line on the edge of your body and draw a line through the middle of your body and you can examine whether you're making contact within the body's core the optimal contact should occur in this area you can see that on this particular serve that i hit the contact was slightly outside the body's core and this can result in a power loss and when it comes to the serve you should always examine several serves and establish whether it is a pattern. So here we have another serve that I hit. We're going to go through the same procedure. We can draw a line right through the ball towards the ground and draw another line right through the middle of my body. And we can see that this contact indeed occurred more within the body's core, which is the optimal way to generate power on the serve. So in other words, the optimal contact point on any serve should be right at 12 o'clock. That should be the goal to be able to hit all serves right at 12 o'clock. Not only is this going to be optimal for this guys, but it's going to maximize the power potential on your serve. Now on the kick serve, the contact is going to be different. So we're going to go through the same process. We're going to check if the body position has changed. So we're going to draw a line through the middle of the body in the beginning of the serve. We're going to scroll forward shortly before the contact. We're going to see that even on the kick serve, the body has shifted forward. So this is something that's very important for you guys to analyze because many of you have a stationary kick serve. In other words, you don't use your body's power sources when you're serving your second serves and especially if they happen to be struck with kick. So in other words, if I know that I'm not going to use my body, I'm going to be stationary, I'm going to intend to toss the ball in this location. But as I scroll forward, we can see that this ball is far away from this location and you might identify this as a mistake. However, it is not a mistake because if we draw a line through the middle of my body, we can see that contact occurred to the left of this line. In other words, contact was established right above my head. In the clock analogy, we can scroll back a few frames shortly prior to the contact, draw a line right through the middle of the body and we scroll forward towards the contact, we can see that contact was established slightly to the left of this line. Remember that the middle line always represents 12 o'clock. And when it comes to the kick serve, it can be struck anywhere from 12 o'clock to 11 o'clock. So if you're flexible enough, you could get away with the toss being on the left side of your head. However, as long as contact is established at 12 o'clock and the body is sideways on the kick serve, we're going to achieve this so important sideways position of the racket head at the moment of contact, which will allow us to strike the serve with topspin.